globalization, competition and growing complexities in the marketplace have made it more difficult for companies to get a grip on their ever-expanding supplier networks. Logistic companies have to contend with dynamic disruptions to their operations, including risks arising from insider threats, data protection, integrity of suppliers, delivery persons and infrastructure designing among others. For investors, the disruption is to a supply chain network also weighs heavily in their overall planning. With firms spending as much as 30% of their startup capital on supply chain logistics, companies face significant risks to their reputational and operational integrity in the event of an incident. For security managers, the threat of disruption is not a question of if it will take place but rather where it would occur. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of India Risk Report in which we are going to look at supply chain management and the several threats that the entire logistics lineup for our companies are going to continue to face particularly with dynamic disruptions to their operations, including risks from insider thefts, data protection, integrity of supplies, delivery persons, infrastructure, and most importantly, to the emerging smart cities that India is soon going to have. And we have none other with us than the one person who has fathered the concept of the smart cities, Dr. Sudhir Krishna. Welcome to the show, sir. Smart cities are something that you have fathered as a concept and it's something which is now very much a buzzword. Uh, but there are two aspects to smart cities. One is the people and one is the logistics and the commodities and the infrastructure that make up smart cities. So how do you balance it out, the need of the people vis-a-vis -vis supply chain management, particularly with reference to smart cities. You know, movement of goods through the city and into the city has to be analyzed. What goods have to come to city for consumption in the city and what goods have to cross the city to go beyond the city. That has to be examined by the transport planners. And we have to have bypass roads for the second category. What doesn't have to terminate in the city, what is not to be used by the people in the city, must not enter the city and we should have peripheral roads. The ring road concept is there that has to be promoted. And alongside the ring road, we should avoid ribbon development. Otherwise, the same problem will come again and you have to have more and more ring roads. So the ring roads have to be well planned along with the hinterland development. That is as far as the throat goods are concerned. But what is to be consumed in the city, that is another challenge. Because people need, you know, you order a fridge or you order goods to be consumed, vegetables have to come. Then we require truck terminals, which should allow the, uh, the goods to be parked for some time and enter the city only when the, there is no competition with the rest of the population. For example, early part of the morning, you say 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., when people are still not out, at that time these goods should leave the terminus until such time they should be parked in the terminus and then you know this should be on the periphery of the of the city that is the regional planning mode so in a region we should have to identify the consumption uh, hubs and the parking hubs and the two must be aligned in a way that let the movement of goods in a, in a most efficient manner you don't want goods to be parked for too long we talk, keep talking of goods sir and we keep talking of people but there is another element to it all and that is the need for better public private partnership at the same time there is a better need for logistics management you know the, the first and foremost thing is that there has to be good regulation in place the motor vehicles act is being amended now and i my understanding is when i have gone through the amendments and i find these are good amendments these would encourage uh, you know, people to, to take care of the other's concern, other's worries more. And uh, violation of uh, traffic laws is going to become, you know, bigger punishment than before. So that is one. And secondly, government has to withdraw, and it is withdrawing already, from directly handling uh, all the economic activities. The government has to go more into the regulatory mode and allow private entrepreneurs to come in a bigger way. Now take the case of, you know, truck terminals I mentioned before. 
and movement of goods into the city through the what kind of lorries will ply and so on. It is only the private entrepreneur who can do the good job of it. Whereas government should ensure that you know wrong time people don't enter the city, wrong kind of vehicles don't go. So that is uh, one aspect. Secondly, ICT can come help in a big way. The information and communication technology can allow us to check as to where the, the traffic is more and what route should be taken. Right. There are two types of smart cities that are being planned. One is the green field and one is the brown field projects. Now, in each of these projects, particularly the ones which are the ones which are going to be closer to a city that already exists, how are the rules of engagement, in particularly with reference to supply chain management, going to be so dramatically altered across the road where a new smart city comes up as a satellite to an existing city which is not exactly smart? Uh, you know, this uh, new smart city will have a slightly different role in the sense that it will be drawing more from the main city in terms of people will be coming more to you know provide services. In Malaysia, you see Putrajaya in the evening it is deserted and in the morning and daytime it is busy. So in our case also we are seeing so many examples which are like uh, in Raipur, Naya Raipur and so on and so forth. So it is a different dynamics for the old city to be making made smarter and that is where the life is really. The future lies in regulating the movement of goods into the city and around the existing cities and the newer cities to come up, I mean it's going to be an exception here and there. And in both the cases huge opportunity is there for the private sector and it is for us, for the planners, for the government and for the business leaders to look for the opportunity of you know bringing in efficiency and along with efficiency prosperity prosperity to the area which will be shared by the entrepreneur as well as by the local people in terms of better employment opportunities better goods and services becoming available so this is the this is the future which smart cities can bring in right but, yeah. uh, on that futuristic and optimistic note i'll have to end this session with you but we'll be back after a break with another expert who's going to look at another dimension to supply chain management but until then thank you very much sir and we'll be back after a break Welcome back. We are continuing with our discussion on supply chain management and now we have two hands-on experts who will actually give us a reality check on what are the challenges that the industry faces and what both large companies and medium and small scale enterprises face. And we have Mr. Mahinder Singh Karakoti who has spent over 20 years in corporate security investigation risk management and compliance and also we have Mr. Surat Mukherjee who again has 20 years of experience in all forms of accounting, auditing, financial management and I'm told a little bit about cyber security also. So let me go with the first cyber security question. I think cyber security is a threat that we don't really look at too seriously. It is the kind of ostrich attitude that we have because we'll not talk about it, the problem will disappear. But the problem is only going to become bigger and bigger and our figures show that experts want that 53% of all cyber security risks to company supply chain management come from worker carelessness because a lot of them include checking on dubious email attachment and various things of that nature and this is obviously going to have a spiraling effect on business and industry. The IT infrastructure in our country uh, is in a pretty nascent stage you know and more and more as we move into complicated supply chain solutions and being just in time, being right on time, every industry is slowly embracing this. Mm. Surveys, uh, you know, they give a different story because it always goes into a certain mass, uh, a fewer number of people, so it never really goes inside every industry and a composite figure never comes out. But it's a fact that Organizations cannot today ignore technology. They have to adapt because customers today need transparency. We need to know where our cargo is, how it is going to get delivered, completely unhindered. Uh, so for which we need technology. We can't only believe and depend on only logistics as a manpower driven setup. So we have to go to technology. Imagine we track our couriers and everything today. Any disruption in that could lead to a catastrophic effect in the entire supply chain scenario and there are two supply chain scenario one is inward supply chain wherein the factories get fed 
from their sourcing points and there is one the customer side of it. Both has tremendous effect if this risk is not taken head on today. That's very important. I think that's a real warning message that you have very honestly given to people, sir. But you, Mr. Karakoti, uh, seem to be looking at corporate security and various risk related issues. Now, there is an ongoing problem for the Indian industry. That is the untrained or the incapacity that exists in the physical guarding that exists all around. Now, everyone seems to become more and more dependent on physical guards and the security companies. But the level of training and the level of being able to efficiently detect problem areas and dangers is very, very poor. Or am I overstating it? You're not overstating it, right? The most important aspect of if you look at from the uh, warehousing perspective, you look, look at from the transportation perspective, it's all the manpower driven. We are at a very nascent stage of you know implementing standards. Like for example, if you look at the US, they had a Homeland Security which talks about CTPAT and we have the European Union called Authorized Economic Operators, right? They, they, they had certain set of standards, right, which have been need to be followed. And in, in India, looking at the market, looking at the geography, looking at the, you know, the, 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 the overall upstream and downstream kind of a logistics, right? We need to come up with the standard which says that if you are providing a security manpower or a trucker to a particular function, then it's important that the, the knowledge set and the skill set need to be mapped, right? And then they need to be mapped with the risk which a particular company look at. Mr. Mukherjee, what would you, in simple terms, say are the real accounting and management challenges because it is all sorts of figures are doing the round but quite clearly the bottom line is that if you get supply chain management right and the accounting of products and the 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 wastage and the spillover effect of the entire confusion that exists you could even india could look at a one percent to one and a half percent growth in its gdp so what would be your advice to the industry what we need to look into here is that as we speak there is a huge set of losses which are built into the entire supply chain process mm -hmm. whether be it the fuel subsidy the compensations the kind of transport that is used the kind of manpower we, we talk about child labor now whether logistics for cutting cost is implementing child labor mm -hmm. And in terms of transparency of the last mile connectivity with the consumer, these are very, very opaque as we speak. If transparency is brought into this by online GPS tracking of the freight till the last mile, there can be tremendous savings. And this coupled with the infrastructure development that is slated to come, we really not seen the effect, but in terms of the road infrastructure, the water, India being a river-driven country, why we don't get into our water transport in a large way. So if the efficiency of the transport channel and the truckers who still are in a hugely unorganized sector, if they're brought into an organized sector, TDS deduction is a responsibility of the uh, person who is hiring a transport today. Why? Because the organization, the entire setup of the transport, it's so unorganized that collecting tax from them, government is finding it difficult. So if that is brought into an overall net and with GST coming in, we would need transparency in these aspects. You know, he was talking about transportation and uh, all the goods coming in and regulating that and looking at it properly from the management's perspective. And 22% of the goods coming in are to be physically inspected in India. I mean, that's an average. In Germany, there is only 3% of inspection. China, there is 10% of inspection. So obviously, goods move faster. How would you ensure that technology is used to make this inspection process less painful. I agree saying that, you know, if you look at the time lag, actually the, 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 the total time taken to, to check the material and all is quite high. The only way, the way we can do it, saying that, you know, to, to make technology available, right, uh, to the authorities who are checking it and the, and the people who are transporting that goods. The guy need to be trained on that, right? Uh, if you look at that, the, the AEO and the CTPAT, right, it helps to move much more faster inside the, the goods inside the US or the European Union because they are able to map it saying that the, 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 the product is moved from point A to point B, right, in a secure manner and they are able to do with the help of barcoding or with the help of, you know, other, other technology where they know that what exactly the product is all about. Well, both of you have highlighted a number of very crucial issues and I think those watching this program would certainly take back some serious lessons from it. But again, back to you, Mr. Mukherjee. In terms of accounting and risk to the supply chain, 
how can you in just very succinct terms make it much more efficient than what it is because there's considerable wastage i think the very important aspect is logistics is an integral part of every manufacturing and every uh, distribution setup every industry needs to internally run it like an organization rather than a dedicated logistics company the way they run it with efficiency logistics should not take it as that i am a cost sitting in the company's balance sheet they should kind of make them as a profit center how i can efficiently with minimum resource high technology i can run my company so the logistics should be seen as a profit center because logistics can add lot many value to this secondly we need to really be knowing the customer who my customers are what are their needs the way uh, e-commerce firm needs to take care of the customer and the way a heavy engineering company needs to look at their customers are very unique so each company needs to compartmentalize this and understand who is my customer what they really need and address those things in a seamless manner mr karakoti back to corporate risk security and area of your speciality according to one study 40% of data security breaches experienced by companies and organizations from are from attacks from their suppliers and criminals are increasingly realizing that this is a channel they can exploit how can you stop it from happening or reduce that 40% to start with let's say 30% if you look at the risk from upstream and downstream they are the same but it depends from industry to industry right if you look at at uh, when i say industry to industry saying that a steel industry and a cement industry or the auto manufacturers they all have a different kind of a risk so it's very important for organization to understand and to make their uh, supply chain risk management methodology a strong things one they need to analyze they need to adopt they need to understand saying that what exactly happening where they can reduce the losses right plus what kind of a control mechanism they can put in place where they can check particularly the suppliers and the downstream and upstream both 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 kind of an activity uh, plus it's important for an organization to look at the various aspects right of the risk right uh, for from geopolitical to the to to the to the natural disasters to the man made disasters right and they need to have an a plan in place to mitigate those kind of a risk uh, one of the biggest challenge for us is saying that if you are hiring a complete logistic supply chain manpower look at an hypothetical situation we don't know from where the guy is coming in we are not doing the background verification we don't know what he do how he do what what he what is qualification whether he is trained for that particular activity or not so we need to give emphasis on that particular part one so we are able to curtail some kind of a human resource part the second part is the training we need to train people saying that what they need to talk what what they need to speak about it like you know my earlier speaker has talk about the you know the data uh, privacy part data it's okay somebody is going to attack it but what about the intellectual property of a person when he is going to transmit it orally you know by by some kind of written you know methodology and all so it's important to train people right and the last part is that you need to analyze and keep monitoring the risk right? yeah so the bottom line is that you have to keep progressively moving upwards up the ladder quite clearly while companies continue to focus on profit margins what companies would do well as our discussions have proved is to ensure that the losses can be reduced and automatically the profit margins will go up and and therefore it is equally important in supply chain management as in any other business to ensure that the whole risk mitigation and the risk to your business is reduced to the level that your profit margins look better thank you very much for being with us on this show supply chain as a whole there are things which is controlled by government like the custom clearance which is an essential part of any supply chain or any global supply chain which is 100% controlled by the government authorities and their officials so if there are platform which can give access where you know the private players can be given access they can basically align their supply chain issues supply chain risk supply chain planning with their you know infra infrastructure which is used by the government officials or their agencies so that they can plan it better they can de risk few things wherein they do not have the visibility right now so yes there is a opportunity wherein public and you know 
private partnership can take place in place, which will bring, uh, I would say, a newer potential in this sector and will bring cost down, risk down, and and harmonize the system to cater the customer needs. Welcome back. Uh, we are continuing with a discussion on supply chain management and the various risks that the industry in India faces, particularly because at one level we are trying to move forward dramatically and very quickly. At the other level, uh, we need to get our house in order with a number of things and we have none other than Mr. Gary Singh with us who is uh, one of the well-known experts on the risk management and the security and the need to do a, a more sensible deep down analysis. Gary, I want to ask you, how does supply chain infrastructure in India, the situation look like currently? Because there's a lot of talk about it. But are we, are we really up to speed with managing the challenges that are being thrown up every day with a combination of thefts, technology, movement of goods, spread of infrastructure and wanting to do more while not sorting out the loose ends as they exist. I think to start with, there's a joyful news that India is now ranked 35th on the Logistics Performance Index, which is a jump of 19 places from where we were in 2015. So there is positive movement and we do not look as bad as 130th in the overall business ease of doing business uh, uh, index which has been launched. But the supply chain actually is operating at two different tiers. There is one tier which you can call the environment, which is going to comprise basically of governance, taxation, infrastructure, duties, processes. And there is a second tier which is operations, which are primarily so-called the choice of logistic operations, the speed of the vehicle that you want to use and so and so forth, the security and loss prevention techniques. So the first tier is more of government's duty and the second tier is the job which can be taken care of by the private operators, companies. So as of now, combination of these two are not producing enough effective results. In fact, the situation is, though we are 35th, but if in terms of the first country in logistic performance index, Germany, we are only 75% efficient. Look at a country as vast as India and losing 25% just in inefficiency, it's, it's almost killing. I think certainly there is a huge uh, amount of losses that we are incurring and if we can get that right, we can certainly improve our GDP and our growth rate quite dramatically at least by 1%. But what would be your immediate short term solutions that we need to do? Because there are, for my understanding, there are various verticals. One is the goods itself. The other is the thefts. The third is the use of technology and the fourth is the staff that needs to be trained to use the technology and finally right. all the managers need to look at this issue more seriously. Right. I think all these points are very relevant, very valid and like I said the two tiers of operations of supply chain, one at the environment level which is more in the government hand and second at operation, there are different actionables to be taken care at both levels. Mm -hmm. Level one, when we look at environment, I think government has to really look at, if not privatizing certain sector, at least look for a public-private partnership. It can be adding on to the speed, it can be adding on to the ease of operation, and it can be adding on as industry wants. So today, government wants to make a highway, which industry is looking forward to another direction to go so that that challenge actually can be well well administered that way and when it comes to operation challenge at the company level there are again too many things which can be done but if i have really the choice of creating three first three things that every company operation need to look at number one know your risks a lot of people are busy asking others what do you do and they follow Maybe. so for example if i have stomach ache and my friend went to a great neurosurgeon and got the right treatment. Am I ready to go to a neurosurgeon to get my stomach and cured? Not really. But that's what the attitude in the industry is. So the professional skills are not only lying void at the lower level, it's at, it's at most of the levels. Number two, in terms of after knowing your risk, a great portion is adopt certain standards. Now, rather than trying to recreate your own mechanism, how you do things, we have these wonderful standards, very time tested. We have CTPAD, we have TAPA, we have ISO standards. I'm not recommending you pick up any specific 
but at least adopt one which will help you to give you benchmarks, guarding light for every piece of thing you do. And thirdly, which is a must, is your response mechanism. And why response mechanism comes in here? Because the overall administrative bodies and the law enforcement as well as judiciary has not come up to pass marks to give us response if there is a medical attention, if there is a vehicle breakdown or anything else on the highways or, or even the trains. Yeah. So response mechanism. So first three things, go for know your risks. Number two, adopt some standards. And number three, at least have your in-house response Basic mechanism. Response. Well, thank you, Gary. I think, you know, that's very, very helpful because that really sums up the challenges and what should be our responses. <laughs>